Welcome everyone. In this video, we're going to discuss line integrals. So I'll illustrate the uh, idea with this example. So suppose you have some curve. C could be a plane curve or a space curve. So let's say it is uh, represented by a smooth parametrization R of T, which let's suppose it has three components. So it's a space curve. You'll have the component X of T, Y of T, Z of T. And let's suppose T ranges from some a to b. Then the integral along the curve c of some function f of x, y, z respect to its arc length. That's how we define a line integral. And here, of course, ds is the arc length. So this is going to be equal to the magnitude of r prime of t dt. So these are the components you have to remember every time you're evaluating a, um, a line integral. And Every time you want to evaluate this, you can also write the integral in the following way, where you uh, compose f of x, y, z with the respective parametrization. So this can also be written as the integral from a to b. So those are the bound on t, f uh, of r of r t, and ds is, of course, we're saying this is the magnitude of r prime of t dt. So that's how we're going to evaluate. So we're going to compose f with the smooth parametrization of the curve, and then we're going to multiply that with the magnitude of r prime of t, and then we integrate respect to t. All right, so let's see how this is work with uh, this particular example. So we want to find the line integral of this function over the straight line segment from this point to that point. So we need to find a smooth parametrization of this segment. So, so let's suppose you have these three points in space. Let's say this is our first point, that's our second point. So the direction is this way, and that's our curve C. So our initial point is three, two, one, and the final point is two, negative two, negative three. We need to find the direction of this, so we need a vector. That's gonna be the final point minus the initial point. So for the X component, we'll do two minus three, that would be negative one, and then we're going to do negative two minus two, that's negative four, and then the final components, negative three minus one, that's negative four. All right, so that's our direction of this line segment. That means our curve C is going to be defined as um, R of T, which is equal to in vector form. So you'll have the X components will start at the initial point, And then we have the direction right here. We multiply that by T. So you'll have three plus negative one. So we'll just put three minus T. Then the Y component will be two minus four T. And the Z component would be the following, negative uh, one minus four T. And T is going to go from zero to one because when T is equal to zero, we, we can substitute zero in here, you're gonna be at the initial point. Now when t is equal to one, you can plug in one right here for each t, and you'll see you'll be at the final point. All right, so that's our smooth parametrization of the function uh, of the curve C. Now let's evaluate f at these uh, components. So this is going to be substituted for x of t, this is for y of t, and this is for z of t into this function right here. So we're going to go ahead and now find, so this is kind of like your step number one. Now, uh, step number two, we can think about is finding the derivative of this function, which will simply be its direction, negative one, negative four, and negative four. And now let's find its magnitude. So the magnitude of our prime of t is going to be the square root of, we're going to square each component and add them up. So it'll be negative one square, that's one, negative four square, that's 16, plus negative uh, four square, that's gonna be 16. So we're going to get the square root of 33 as our prime of t. All right, now the next thing we're gonna do is evaluate f at r of t. That means we're going to, um, so I, I wanna write this as little f instead of the big f. So we're gonna sub in each component of r of t into f of x, y, z. So here we're going to replace x with 3 minus t, y with 2 minus 4t, and z with 
1 minus 4t. So let's see how that's going to look like. So f of x, y, z. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this in the bottom so we have easy access to the problem. So here is our f of x, y, z. And we're going to plug in the components for r of t. So f of r of t is going to be, uh, so x is replaced with 3 minus t. So we'll have 3 minus t plus y. y is 2 minus 4t plus z. z is 1 minus 4t. So remember, I'm subbing this in to our function f of x, y, and z right here. And this is what we get. Now we're going to integrate. So we're almost ready to integrate this. So number five or step number five, we're going to evaluate the line integral along the curve C of the function f of x, y, z, ds. And we said that this is equivalent to the integral from a to b of f of r of t times the magnitude of r prime of t dt. And we have every pieces together. So this is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to 1. So remember, that's our bound on t right here. And our f of r of t, we just found that right there in step number 4. So that's going to be, and you can combine like terms, of course. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have a 3 and a 2 and a 1. So that's going to be 4 plus 2, that's 6. And then for the t's, we have negative 1 minus 4t minus 4t. So that's negative 8t minus 1, negative 9t. All right, and our uh, magnitude of our prime of t, that's going to be square root of 33 dt. And you can pull out the square root of 33 outside the integral. So we're integrating from 0 to 1 of 6 minus 9t dt. Now let's finish up the integration. So this is going to give us the square root of 33 times integral of 6 respect to t, that's 6t, minus inter now if you want you can take out a factor of three and simplify the numbers but let's just keep going uh integral of 9t that's respect to t that's going to be 9t squared over two and we're going to evaluate this from zero to one so as we plug these numbers in we got square root of 33 times six um so we have six minus plug in t equals one you're going to get six minus nine over two and as you plug in zero, you'll get zero. So this will simplify to the square root of 33 times, now if you put them in common denominator, you multiply six by two, you get 12 minus nine, that's gonna be three over two. So this can be simplified as just three over two square root of 33. So that will be the value of this line integral. Here is another example for you. So, so please pause the video, work it out, and then you can check your answers. Let me go ahead and start. So um, we're evaluating this line integral of this function uh, respect to its arc length, that's ds, where c is the upper half of the unit circle x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. All right, so we need to parameterize our curve c. So let me give you a picture. So let's suppose here's our xy plane, and this is our upper half of the unit circle. So we know the radius is one from the center, which is zero, zero. So this is negative one. So let's suppose C is this curve going in this direction. So we're going counterclockwise. So we can parameterize C as a R of T, which would be, so the X component will be cosine of T, Y component would be sine of T. So this is a two dimensional curve. Now, this is the natural way to parameterize a circle where you have, R, R is right here. Since the radius is one, we're just writing cosine T and sine T. Now T is going to range from uh, here all the way around to here. So we know that's going to be from zero to pi. All right, so that's our values uh, T will go from. Now, next thing we're going to do is find the derivative of our uh, R of T. So that's going to give us derivative of cosine t, that's negative sine of t, derivative of sine of t, that's cosine of t. And then we're going to compute the magnitude of our prime of t. That's going to be the square root of each component squared, sine, negative sine squared. Um, that's going to just give us positive sine square of t, cosine uh, square of t for the second component, we add them up. And we know this is our trig identity. This is equal to one. So we're taking square root of one, which is one. 
All right, now let's set up the integral. So our line integral is going to be the integral from a to b of f of r of t times the magnitude of r prime of t dt. That's the uh, definition of a line integral. So then this is equal to, let's go ahead and expand this. We're going to sub in each component. So f of r of t, let's write that down. So f of r of t, so that's f evaluated at r of t. So we're going to plug in these values into x and y respectively. So this will be placed in place of x, and this will be placed in place of y. So we're going to get to following. So we'll have 2 plus x is cosine. So we'll have cosine square of t, and y is sine. So this is sine of t. So that's where f of r of t. All right, let's go ahead and substitute that into our integrand. So we have the integral from 0 to pi of f of r of t, that's 2 plus cosine square of t times sine, so sine of t and r prime of t dt. Well, r prime of t is 1. We just computed the a while ago times dt. All right, so that's the integral we're going to be working with. All right, uh, now let's go ahead and um, simplify this. So the, this parenthesis is not needed. So if I, um, so we're going to go ahead and integrate this. So you can split it up into two integrals. So we're integrating from 0 to pi of 2 respect to t plus the integral from 0 to pi of cosine square of t times sine of t dt. Now this is super easy. If you integrate 2 respect to t, that's 2t. And then we're going to evaluate this from 0 to pi. Plus, now the second one, we're going to do a u substitution. So we're going to let u2 be just cosine. So let's go ahead and let u2 be cosine of t. Then we know du is going to be uh, negative sine of t dt. So we have it right here. We just need to modify it by a negative 1. So we're going to have the integral. I'm going to avoid the limit of integration because I don't want to switch them. Uh, so this is going to be u squared times negative du. And then if you integrate this, you're going to get u to the third over 3 plus c. But we know u is cosine, so I can plug that in and go back to the original limit of integration. All right, so that's a step we can pretty much do it mentally. So this integral will give us negative. So we have negative cosine to the third of t. I'm plugging in my u all over 3, evaluated from 0 to pi. All right, I hope that makes sense. Let's continue. So this is equal to, so like we said, this piece is just going to be 2 pi. And then the second piece, we're going to plug in pi into cosine of t. So cosine of pi, that's negative 1. Uh, when you cube that, you get negative 1 times the negative in front. That's going to be positive 1. So we have positive 1 over 3 minus, now we plug in the lower limit of integration, but the negative from the fundamental theorem of calculus and the negative from here, they'll make it a positive. Cosine of 0 is 1, so this is 1 over 3. All right, by combining like terms, we got 2 pi plus 2 over 3. You can leave it right here. Or you can combine them further, but this is good. All right, I hope you got the same answer as me. All right, take care. See you next time.